When I say Audi, you probably think about a fairly capable, rather impressive performance vehicle with sharp top responses. But sometimes, they make a car that's just kind of silly and fun. This is that car. Let's drive the 2015 Audi A3 Cabriolet with the little engine and no Quattro. And check the tech. Now the A3 was heavily revised for this 2015 model year. It's got a nice power top, it's beautifully insulated, a glass backlight, it cycles in less than 20 seconds and can do so up to 31 miles per hour. Okay, our A3 cab, keeping it affordable here, is about 36.5 base. That's a 1.8 front wheel drive and the basic trim level. A tick under two grand gets us navigation. This is one of my favorites in the industry, worth the money. Driver assist for 1400 gets you parking sonar, rear camera, and blind spot tech. And like it or not, I kinda not, the Audi AMI music interface is something you're gonna want for your portables. That's about 350 bucks. All in, we're at about 40,100. That's kinda your minimum CNET spec. Now inside the A3, just like outside the A3, this car is all growed up. It is a premium compact car. You can tell by the nice finishes in the vehicle, even though it's not terribly ornate. Your eyes drawn immediately, of course, to this head unit, this pop-up screen that in the sedan I think is silly. In the cab, I think it's great because it hides this delicate piece of gear from the elements when you either want to on demand or when the car turns off. Some other things to tell you this car is premium is the fact that you can get Bang & Olufsen audio. I wouldn't, but you can get it. Audi drives select, lets you really control the personality of the vehicle exceptionally well, and you've got a built-in 4G connection. That brings us back to this head unit. Look at that nav display. You're looking at a combination of 4G data pipeline, Google Earth data and imagery, and NVIDIA graphics processing. In terms of sheer map interface, this is the best in the biz right now, and it moves very smoothly underway, which a lot of other cars don't, even without photorealism. Now that 4G icon you see down there is right next to my phone icon because they're separate. This is not pulling data from my phone like most connected cars do today. It's got its own LTE radio. Pricing on that 4G connection is going to be a sticking point for folks. After a six month free period, you're going to pay $100 for five gigabytes across six months. Or $500 gets you 30 gigabytes across 30 months. Nobody likes another wireless bill. I think that goes to zero in the industry in the years ahead, but for now, it's gonna stick in your craw. Being a German car, as typically is the case, no touch. We've got a voice command button over here, but that's a tease. In the cab, there's no voice command. The hardware is not in or available. In the sedan, of course, it would be. This is how you control everything. You've got a turn, kick, and click wheel. You've got four zone buttons around it that correspond to the menu zones in the corners of the screen. You've got these two rockers that kick up or down into any of the four major functions. And on top of that controller, you've got a nice big finger touchpad, particularly good for writing out things like addresses. Let's talk about media. Audis have a great assortment of that, of course. The part that I want to point out is that they're still using this damn Audi AMI connector, which is a proprietary buck on one end, and then you choose the cable that has the other end that goes to what you want, iPhone or USB or what have you. This makes me nuts. They've got a USB port down here, which is what I want to use, but notice it's charge only. Maybe next year they'll give us a USB port that's also smart. Now under the little button nose of our A3, we find, in this case, the lesser of two engines that aren't that far apart. This is the 1.8 liter side saddle four turbocharged with direct injection. They call it a TFSI engine. This is going to give you 170 horsepower, 200 pound feet of torque. Now this little guy's got about 3,400 pounds of car to move, which it gets up to 16, about seven and a half seconds while delivering very good MPG, 2435. Therein, the rationale for the 1.8. Now these 1.8s, by the way, are all front wheel drive. If you want all wheel drive, you're going into a two liter. And they all use the six speed dual clutch automated manual. Well, as I mentioned, we had the two liter Quattro when we had the sedan of this car. Now I've got the 1.8 liter front wheel drive and I miss the two liter Quattro. Not so much the four wheel drive, which I don't need right now in this situation, but I miss the engine and the transmission relationship we had. There's some turbo lag I detect. There's some gear logic lag. There's some transmission actuation lag. And in general, therefore feels like it's kind of always playing catch up. It's always behind the eight ball in terms of power response. The ride quality, however, is really good and fits a car like this. I mean, it's a little cab. 
I don't really want a gutsy track tune suspension in a car that has the top going down. This is a great little car though. Even though it's not as sharp as some Audis are in a performance sense, it's very livable. I just wish the powertrain was a little more snappy to go with its nice tidy lines.